Mass testing for hundreds of airport workers has begun in Shanghai after another outbreak of COVID-19 in one of China's largest cities. Infections are also rising at a record pace in India, Pakistan, Russia and a number of other developing nations. Officials in poorer countries like Gaza say hospitals are overwhelmed. Within a short time, all the beds will be occupied and there will be nowhere to put more patients. As the pandemic shows no signs of receding, the race for a vaccine is speeding up. On Monday, AstraZeneca reported its candidate, developed in partnership with Oxford University, has proven to be 70% effective in trials. That's not as good as drugs developed by Pfizer and Moderna, both of which offer up to 95% protection, but it's much cheaper. Countries are rushing to place orders for all three. Moderna has agreed to provide 20 million doses of its vaccine to the US this year and plans to manufacture up to 1 billion next year. Pfizer and BioNTech have secured a deal to supply the EU with 300 million doses and another 220 million to Japan and the US. And the UK, Japan, Indonesia, Brazil and India have signed up with AstraZeneca for 100 million vaccines each. But poorer countries that are home to many of the world's most vulnerable people are at risk of being left behind. G20 leaders say they will do more to ensure an equitable distribution of vaccines. The vaccines that have been developed must be put into use as the common property of humanity instead of further deepening present injustices. The G20 platform should prepare and operate mechanisms that will assure cost-effective and fair access to the vaccine by everyone. Meanwhile, the number of infections globally has surpassed 50 million and 1.25 million people have died. The pandemic is also wreaking havoc on economies, exacerbating global inequality. Manufacturing and distributing vaccines all over the world could take months, if not years. And unless the richest countries can help, the rest of the world may be left out in the cold. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Well, to discuss the latest vaccine developments, we're joined now by Dr. Mohamed Manir, who's a virologist at Lancaster University. Welcome back to the program, Doctor. Now, some more positive news about a vaccine candidate, this time from the one that's being developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford University. Can you tell us more about how theirs compares with the other two major contenders that have recently announced successful results from uh, Pfizer and Moderna? Well, thank you very much, uh, Oscar, for having me on the show once again. Uh, certainly, this is really a great news, um, primarily because uh, the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine is based on a different technology. I mean, for example, uh, Pfizer and Moderna, those were on uh, the same approach. They used the messenger RNA um, uh, technology to, to develop their vaccine, but AstraZeneca is a different one. It is based on a vectored vaccine, which is basically a cold chimpanzee uh, attenuated virus, which doesn't cause infection. So that gave them a relatively uh, bigger edge in terms of uh, storage, in terms of distribution, in terms of cost as well. And also the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine is a lot more tested and validated because the same technology has been used before for other diseases. So therefore, Although the efficacy is, is relatively low compared to which um, um, AstraZeneca and uh, Oxford uh, and, and Pfizer have reported before, but certainly this is certainly a great news moving forward. That's right. There does seem to be some confusion about the effectiveness of AstraZeneca's vaccine because it seems that it's about 70% effective when two full doses are distributed, but it's actually up to 90% effective when only one and a half doses are injected into a person. What explains this discrepancy? It seems that researchers from AstraZeneca and Oxford don't really have an answer to, answer to that, but could you tell us why that may be the case? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think this is also very important to understand uh, how they calculated 70% effectiveness. And therefore, there is a bit of confusion really in understanding. So let me pan this one out. So they used two different doses. Uh, one uh, group was given two full doses and the other group was given one half dose and one full dose. Uh, both doses were separated with a one month interval. 
the, the cohort and the people who the volunteer within phase three trial, those were given two full doses, they have 60% protection. And compared to the second group, which has one half dose and one full dose, they were 90% effective. So altogether, it is on an average 70% because they got take average of both of those. But that isn't really a true representation for an effectiveness of a vaccine because uh, either you can give uh, one regime of the dose or the second regime. So it could be either 60% or 90%, but it cannot be 70%. Interesting, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the coming days. Uh, what also sets the AstraZeneca vaccine apart from Pfizer and Moderna's is that the company has promised to provide the injection to low- and middle-income countries in developing nations at cost price. So they're saying they'll forego a profit indefinitely in order to provide this vaccine. How important is that, in your view, that they're agreeing to do this? Uh, I think this is uh, more important than having a vaccine, primarily because, um, I mean, in the wealthy nations, they already have made the contract for uh, access to any of the front runners vaccine. But one thing that was missing was really in the low and middle income countries. And that is uh, the, the, the thing that is critical, really, cause, um, uh, Oscar, is that until we don't really vaccinate uh, people um, in the remote areas, in the area where the, the healthcare system is fragile, I don't think that we should anticipate that we will be able to protect any country because this is a global village. What we are talking about is that the disease that is hiding somewhere in the far for long area of Nigeria and other part of uh, countries where the, the, there is a fragile healthcare system, we should not anticipate that any developed country that will have resources to buy the vaccine would be protected. And that is not just for the COVID-19. That is applicable across all the infectious diseases. So you raise really a great point here is that until we don't really make sure that everybody in the in the whole world that are needed the most or vaccinated, we should not anticipate that here in, in the Europe or in America we would be protected. Now, there are various predictions as to when we'll actually see successful vaccines being rolled out. Some say as early as next month, while others say well into the next year. What's your prediction? When do you think we'll see the first immunizations take place? Well, I am seeing it coming very fast. I mean, if we talk about uh, Pfizer uh, BioNTech vaccine, they already have presented the data to the um, EUA authorization, which is emergency authorization by uh, FDA from the United States. Um, and if we talk about AstraZeneca, they are also preparing the dossier being uh, presented to the MHRA, which is a regulatory body here in the UK. So what I'm seeing is that by mid-December, we will have approval for uh, two or three vaccine. And that would be the time when the, um, the storage that is already being manufactured on for emergency application will be distributed. So what I'm seeing is that at the end of December, early January, people who need it the most will be having the vaccine. Okay, and once a vaccine is rolled out, whether or not it's next month or, or early next year, how soon can life return to normal? Well, that is, uh, Oscar, the most excellent question. The reason I'm emphasizing onto this one is that most of the vaccines we are referring to, for example, Moderna, Pfizer, uh, Johnson Johnson, AstraZeneca, Novavax, all these are the vaccines that can protect somebody from severe consequences of the disease. So that means that if a vaccinated person by chance get infected, the disease severity will be reduced. However, what we are not seeing is that the person who is vaccinated will still be able to uh, transmit the infection. And that has been one of the major concerns throughout this pandemic, that disease transmission is so heavy, is so high that the disease is spreading lavishly. So until we have a vaccine, it could be the AstraZeneca, although they, they propose that there is a, some glimpse that it can block the spread of the infection as well. Yeah. But as it stands, we don't have any vaccine that is blocking the spread of the infection. So until we don't really have that vaccine, I don't really think that we will be getting the real benefit of the vaccine that we owe to and the pandemic would be prolonged. Okay, Dr. Mohamed Munir from Lancaster University. A pleasure as always to get your analysis. Thank you.